Hi, I'm Lee Chantel, and today we're going to talk about digital wellbeing and digital equilibrium. The agenda today is to just go over some background and stats and to cover some aspects including digital wellness, digital equilibrium and digital flourishing. And I will give you some tips and tricks for your own digital equilibrium. Here's some um, stats in relation to technology use. The average smartphone owner unlocks their phone 150 times and touches their phone over 2,000 times per day. Users spend almost three hours a day on their smartphones and in our lifetimes we will spend an average of five and a half years on social media. 58% of smartphone users cannot go for one hour without checking their phones. And here's some more stats with our always on culture. 85% of smartphone users check their device while speaking with friends and family. 75% of users admit to texting at least once while they've been driving. And more than half of smartphone owners never switch off their phone, with 71% usually sleeping with or next to their mobile phones. However, all this overwhelm has led to more people wanting to find technology balance. So, for example, 63% of consumers try to limit their phone usage and 43% of workers turn off their phones to cope with distraction. Digital wellness is therefore increasing in popularity. So what is digital wellness and what is digital equilibrium? Well, digital wellness is an optimal state of health, personal fulfillment and social satisfaction that each individual is capable of having when using technology. And digital equilibrium is a term that I have coined which is related to creating lifelong healthy digital habits by balancing technology and social media use, prioritising mindful and conscious digital interactions and creating digital boundaries. I'll also be launching a digital equilibrium website in the new year, so please keep an eye out for that. Digital flourishing is a term created by the Digital Wellness Institute and it covers a mindful approach to digital technology, supporting thriving in a variety of areas and empowering people to take advantage of the benefits and avoiding the associated harms that are related to technology. Unlike some anti-tech approaches such as a digital detox, this is more into healthy technology and they use tools and resources to connect and enhance human relationships. To digitally flourish, skills can be enhanced in at least six areas that relate to digital behaviours. And these are from the eight elements of digital flourishing. So they've used these digital wellness concepts and they've created the digital flourishing wheel, which you can see on your screen. And these address elements that are needed to flourish in the digital age. There's eight different concepts or elements, so let's go through them now. Digital citizenship and productivity are quite important for digital equilibrium. Digital citizenship, for example, encompasses conscious content consumption and privacy and security, where productivity encompasses things like work-life balance and how to manage distractions and enhance your focus. Mental health and communication are also included. I come from a communication background and I have just finished my Bachelor of Psychology Honours studies. And so mental health covers intentional use of technology, how to get meaning and purpose from online and making sure you actually look after yourself. Communication covers a variety of aspects, including knowing how to balance and knowing your boundaries and how to express them to people and being socially responsible when you interact online. Then there's physical health and relationships. Physical health is all the physiological aspects such as sleep and eye health and tech hygiene. Whereas relationships, also a really important aspect in digital equilibrium, focuses on introspection, reflection and getting a sense of connection and community whilst maintaining meaningful interactions. 
And then we round it off with the quantified self and the environment. And the quantified self focuses on gamification and biohacking and wearables where you can um, create and um, have your own information and data that you collect and you can use that to learn more about yourself. And the environment includes such things as ergonomics and digital minimalism. There's a concept that I love called travel as transformation. And I have used this when I've traveled abroad to make really big decisions in my life and to change my mindset and to change habits. And I'd like just to point out that this helps me when I'm seeing things from afar to reflect and to learn about myself more and to change these habits. Obviously with COVID, I couldn't go over to Indonesia for my congratulations on graduating present, but I'd like you to remember to reflect as we go through some of these concepts. First, we'll start with productivity. Did you know that our always on culture leads to distractions and shallow work instead of deep work? So I'd like you to reflect and ask yourself some questions in relation to productivity. And you can do this by pausing the video for say 30 seconds or writing down some of these questions and um, reflecting on it later. So the things I'd like you to reflect and ask yourself are, how often are you distraction free when you are working? How many of your notifications need to be turned on? And do you have clear boundaries for work and off work? And I have this great concept called pause, consider, decide that I use to um, make mindful and conscious decisions in my life. And for example, a few years back, this helped me to quit consuming refined sugar. So I'm going to use this concept to give examples of how we can use, we can um, work on our digital equilibrium. And for example, in the productivity aspect. When you are about to check your phone, say due to all those notifications you have, I want you to pause. And I want you to consider, do you need to be checking your phone right now? And hopefully you'll make a conscious decision and you'll decide, I need to focus on my work now, so I'm gonna check my phone later on my next break. And something I'd like you to action moving forward is to set some time aside this week to turn off all your notifications that do not come from people. Then we move on to digital citizenship. Did you know that algorithms which are designed to keep us consuming content and getting advertisement can lead to echo chambers online? And this means we see and interact only with content we already agree with. Because of this, polarization is created where people with strong differing views are divided and those with moderate views are silenced. A great example at the moment is um, the US electorate, so Republicans versus Democrats. And I'd like you to reflect and ask yourself a couple of questions. Before you post something, do you think about the consequences for yourself and for others? Do you know where to update your privacy settings? And do you read the whole article before you share it? So with the pause, consider, decide idea, here's some examples for digital citizenship. The next time you see something that upsets you on the line, I'd like you to pause. And I'd like you can, to consider if it's something you need to consciously invest your time and energy into. And if you make conscious decision, hopefully you'll say something along the lines of, this is just the latest outrage, there'll be something new tomorrow, I need to focus on other things, so I'm just going to ignore it. And I'd like you to check your privacy settings on whatever website or app you use the most, and I'd like you to update those. Then we move on to mental health. Changing habits is really hard if you do not have positive mental health and self-compassion. Did you know that stress resilience helps with managing stress and you can add to your stress resilience deposits by simple things like calling a friend, meditating, exercising and spending time in nature? I'd like you to reflect and ask yourself, why do you use social media when you use it and how do you feel when you use it? 
How often do you actively engage online rather than passively scrolling? And have a look through the people and pages you follow. Do they bring you annoyance or anger or do they encourage and inspire you? So pause, consider, decide example for mental health is the next time you reach for your phone, I want you to pause. And I want you to consider why you want to interact right now. And you can remember this term called HALT and it's asking, are you hungry? Are you angry? Are you lonely? Or are you tired? And hopefully you can make a conscious decision and decide, okay, I just want to go and find out about my friend's university marks. I'll check, check online quickly or send them a message and then I'm going to log off. And to action going forward, I'd like for the next time you're feeling bored, angry, lonely or sad for you to do something active outside if you can or call a friend instead of scrolling passively. Communication is the next one. Did you know that nonverbal cues, behaviours and body language serve as social value signals to help us work out how others value us, which is then translated into how we feel about ourselves? It's really hard with um, communication online, but we're adaptable and we can update how we communicate. And this we can base on intentions, such as the goal of your interaction and individual styles of communication. I'd like for you to reflect and ask yourself, how often do you connect with your friends and family outside of liking their posts? Do you text, call or send them audio messages? How often do you schedule breaks when you are working online? Do you know how algorithms used in online spaces impact non-white and non-males? Then I'd like you to pause, consider and decide. Next time, but before you're about to send another meme to your BFF, please pause and consider, will they appreciate it and do they have time to respond? Hopefully you can make a conscious decision and decide, yeah, they really are into trains, so I'm going to send them this that meme about a train, but I'm going to make sure that I call them later on in the week to check in properly. And I'd like you to action and take the time to organise to speak with your top three friends in the next few weeks. Then the last one is relationships. Did you know that infinite choices is an issue leading to overwhelm? whether we're online, ordering at our favourite vegan restaurant, or dating online. And this term, there's a couple of terms I'd like you to think about, whether you are a maximizer or a satisficer. And a maximizer is someone who's exhaustively always seeking the best, and they use so much time and energy, and they're always unhappy with the outcome. Whereas a satisficer accepts good enough and they're happy with their outcomes because they can move on after decisions. So I'd like you to reflect and ask yourself, how often do you have conversations with family and friends when your phone is out of reach and you are 100% present? How often do you engage in positive and active interactions online that encourage meaningful conversations? And do you want meaningful relationships but get caught up in the superficial aspects of online engagement? If so, how could you change this? And this is one that I had just recently that I've been reflecting on because I've recently joined the dating app Bumble. So I'd like to share with you my own pause, consider, decide that helped me with this relationship aspect. So when I was viewing the plethora of potential matches on Bumble, I paused and I considered, do I really need any more matches when I can just focus on the ones I already have? So I consciously decided that I'm going to focus on the ones I have and make more meaningful interactions and conversations with them. I turned off my location settings, which is a digital boundary, so I'm not getting someone's face pop up as soon as I put on the app. And I'm organising to catch up in person with the people who I enjoy conversing with. So I'd like you to interact online with a more mindful aim of connecting meaningfully with people and not getting caught up in superficial interactions. And so we've covered quite a lot today. We've covered the awareness and understanding of concepts such as digital well-being, digital equilibrium and digital flourishing. 
I've given you actionable aspects for embodiment of digital equilibrium. And hopefully, by leading by example, you too can promote digital well-being and empower others to take more conscious and mindful decisions in their digital approaches. Here's a couple of resources that I suggest you have a look at, including The Social Dilemma, which you can see on Netflix, which is a really good starting point to start the conversation. I'd also like to draw your attention to the Digital Wellness Certificate Program with their next course starting on the 11th of January. You can join with my affiliate link. Thank you very much for your attention today and I'd like to leave you with a thought that life is exactly where your focus is. Thank you.